Hello, everybody. This is Alex Vicario with Bloodline Sports with our uh, most recent edition of Outside the Box. I'm here with co-founders Nick Siaka and TJ Wilcoxon. How you doing, guys? Great. Hello. What's Hello. going on, Alex? How you doing, buddy? Uh, doing well. So uh, today we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to recap our picks from the Super Regional. Uh, we're going to go over how we did. We're going to make some more picks for the next round. Um, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, behavior in college baseball and how that's how that's going. So, uh, TJ, why don't you give us the results of a first of our super regional round? Yeah, or should you say lack of behavior? Um, <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to say kind of go over how we did as prognosticators. How do you say that word? Um, <clears throat> Starting with Alex, we'll go in alphabetical order. Alex was five and three in the Super Regional. Nick was four and four, and I rounded out the seller at two and six. Um, big surprise to me was six of the eight teams that did advance to Omaha were on the road, which uh, most of you that watched it, I'm hoping a lot of you that are watching this watched it. <clears throat> the, the the environment at those stadiums are unbelievable. Um, and it's why Omaha has always been on my bucket list. But when I watch some of those super regionals, I think those might be just as fun. The uh, Some of the stadiums are amazing. Just even the backdrop around the stadiums were great. Um, but, yeah, it was very entertaining. I think, uh, what, about three of the eight went to game three, maybe four. About half of them. Half of them went. Yeah. 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 And so it's it's tough when you know you got to win two games or you're done. And managing the pitching staff, especially how uh, incredible the offenses have become th this year in college baseball. <clears throat> so we're gonna go to our picks for Omaha. We'll start with bracket number one. Alex will put this up on the screen. And we'll start with Alex. We're each going to pick two teams from each bracket. <clears throat> then we'll pick the one team that will advance to the championship series. And then we'll pick our overall winner of the 2022 College World Series. All right. I'm going to start off here, and I'm going to go with Notre Dame. Um, I love the way they play the game. I was very happy to see them beat Tennessee. Uh, so yeah, hopefully they stay hot. And then in the other bracket there, I'm going to go with Oklahoma over Texas A&M. So yeah, taking the two unranked, unranked teams and hopefully they meet up there in the next round. Nick, what do you got? I got, uh, finding Irish over, uh, Texas and I have OU over Texas A&M. I think the fighting Irish are going to continue to surprise people. Well, yeah, I'm with the... With the bracket, with the losers bracket, the two teams that would could finish in the, I guess the final four, the two teams that could come out of this bracket, could be Texas and Notre Dame, just the way it works out with the double elimination. So it doesn't, it's not a three game series, with Texas versus Notre Dame, right? You got the, so let's say Notre Dame beats Texas, Texas would go down and play the loser of Texas A&M and Oklahoma, then and if they keep winning, yeah, right. whoever loses that yeah. game is gone. Correct. So, but, but you're, you're two that you're saying is Notre Dame and who? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So Oklahoma. same as you. Yep. All right. Well, those, those are my picks as well. It's, you know, you always want to look at who's got the momentum going in. Well, you could argue they all do. Right. <laughs> um, but, you know, watching that Notre Dame game, Notre Dame team, I think they're uh, they're very well coached. I think they're a little bit older, what a lot of these teams are, with COVID and the, the portal and everything. But um, they seem to play the game the right way, <clears throat> pitch and catch and get timely hitting. So, yeah, that's why I like Notre Dame and uh, I like Oklahoma. So let's go to bracket number two. <clears throat> All right.
All right, why don't we go in reverse order here? Okay, I'll start. Um, yeah. I like Stanford, man, the depth. Uh, you know, Cody Huff's one of our local boys here in Arizona. Dude, he's a real dude, catcher. Um, got crazy pop for – he's not a ginormous guy. About 1.7, 1.8, uh, <coughs> excuse me, pop time. Uh, so I, I do like Stanford, just the depth, the pitching. Um, I like them to come out, and I like Ole Miss. I think Ole Miss uh, was the last team in of this entire <laughs> season. And obviously, huge pedigree. They're a, um, a, what are they What are they called, blue something? Blue you know, chip? Blue, well, yeah, something like that. But they, they've been around for decades. and Blue bloods. Blue bloods, thank you. So I, I like where they're at. I mean, they they obviously – the one thing with Ole Miss and Auburn, of course, they're only going to play the one game. I mean, they might meet up later in the bracket, but um, they definitely know each other. So that makes for a, a good first game anyways. So that's – so I, I'll take Stanford and Ole Miss to come out of bracket number two. I guess it's my turn. <clears throat> I'm going to start off with Arkansas. I think they're going to upset Stanford. Uh, I like their pitching. They have depth as well, and I'm going to go uh, Ole Miss over uh, Auburn. Even though Auburn played, uh, you know, they had great series against uh, OSU, but I feel that Ole Miss has an uh, overall better team. All right, Nick, you and I, the first round, we were right there. This round, we're going opposites. I'm going Stanford and Auburn. Um, one, I like Stanford's group, and two, Got to represent the Pac-12 and the West Coast a little bit. Um, and then Auburn. Yeah, I like Auburn over Ole Miss. Yeah, I, you know, I, I watched the Auburn-Oregon State series quite a bit. Um, I, the, the Auburn pitching to me was, I guess, you know, fairly deep, but didn't look crazy dominant. Um, but they, they did their job, you know, they got, they got the outs when they needed them and felt like, uh, I felt Oregon state pressed a little bit. They, I don't, I don't, they weren't free and easy. Like a lot of missed opportunities. They did oh, not yeah. perform how they had been doing all year. That's right. for sure. A lot of yeah. missed opportunities. Yeah. I think when Auburn went up there in one game one, it kind of was like a uppercut to their system and, Ended up, I think, being the reason they lost in game three. But so um, I'll start again for the final. So my championship series, I have Notre Dame versus Ole Miss. And I have Ole Miss winning in three. That's so I got Ole Miss as the 2022 College World Series champions. Okay. Go ahead, Alex. You can shoot this one, buddy. So what am I doing? My take in. One from each side. I'll take Notre Dame and uh, mm, let's go Notre Dame and Stanford. And uh, I'll smart, see. smart guys playing. Yeah, and I'll I'll stick with the Pac-12, and we'll. Am I picking a winner? Yep. Let's go Stanford all the way. Stanford over Notre Dame. Yep. I'm going to continue with the Fighting Irish. Fighting Irish, Old Miss, and Fighting Irish. All right. 2022. Well, I hope you guys are right because I need to redeem myself for the Super Regionals. <laughs> oh. Clean up. I also have a job opening. Um, so we'll, we'll you know, take this next topic to Alex. Um, Mainly because he he's been an educator for almost thirty years, right? Yeah, twenty twenty four. Yeah, co coach for over twenty. Yep. Um, I'll lead off on saying that you know some of the actions that I saw, and of course, especially Tennessee, <clears throat> and seeing all the the tweets go out, and and I couldn't agree more with with all of them or most of them is. I went in, you know, a month ago, six weeks ago, thought this Tennessee team was unbelievable. They're great to watch. Um, thought the fan base was good. You know, the stadium was electric. Uh, even like the coach. Thought he's young and 
building something there. And uh, the more I watched, you know, you got fans throwing cups on the field and just, you know, <clears throat> ruin every close ball or strike or every close play. And the, to kick it off, I think it was in the regular regionals, the, the Tennessee player hitting a double as he's rounding first and he's flipping off the opposing dugout. And uh, I thought that was just – the fact that that kid wasn't suspended maybe for the rest of the season is shame on NCAA, shame on Tennessee, shame on the athletic directors, shame on the coach. And uh, – but, yeah, was, we'll tell you, it's not just Tennessee, but that, that's what stuck out. So what do you got to say, Alex? Yeah, I think Tennessee was definitely the most egregious. But as you watch each game, you know, there is a flare up here and there with every team. Um, I just feel like it comes from the top down. You know, if the coach, the coach either encourages it or allows it. So either way, they're culpable when it comes to the behavior of their team. Um so, yeah, after that happened, everyone's saying, well, coach has to do something. Coach has to, you know, get it, get it to get. As far as I know, he didn't address it and behavior didn't change much. So if he's OK with it, that's fine. That's, you know, that's just the way that the program and him and everyone will be perceived. And if that's, you know, how you want to look, that's fine. But to me, I think it disrespects the game, the other team, um, the tournament everything i don't think it's a good look uh i mean i coached plenty of high school games where the other teams are out of control and the coaches didn't say anything and it upsets you and you feel embarrassed for them and yeah. you use it as a teaching moment for your players and say you see what it looks like you see how you feel you see what they look like and you know you you teach you use it as a lesson to teach them how to play the game right and I think we've all coached and we all pretty much have the same belief is that you kind of stick with your guys and cheer them on and talk to your guys. I mean, I've had other teams talk to coaches like, you know, you're at third and you say, where was that pitch in their dugout? Kids yell. It was right down the middle. Coach, what are you thinking? I look at the head coach. I'm like, you're going to let them talk to a head coach, you know, Um but the head coach doesn't say anything and you're like, ah, oh, I get it. Yeah. So I just think it's a bad look all around. And I don't know if NCA NC2A isn't going to do anything. I don't know who can, if the coach isn't going to, but yeah, it's definitely a bad look. And I think it, it takes away from, you know, the viewing experience. And we've talked about even the announcers, <laughs> the folks of it, maybe not necessarily justify it or encourage it, and they say, oh, this is why people love Tennessee baseball. This is why the stadium's packed. Well, I read plenty of tweets from Tennessee fans that said, I used to love this team and I find them hard to watch now. And I'm embarrassed for Tennessee and Tennessee baseball. So I don't think it's all good. And I saw plenty of packed stadiums with teams that behaved, you know, better. So I don't think that's necessary. I mean, they're good. That's going to pack stands if you're good. I don't think you need to act that way. So Sorry about the tangent, but that's that's how I feel. Well, what's what's the old saying? Act like you've been there. Exactly. You know, act like you've been there. You know, we don't know what's been going back and forth on the field between each team, but act like you've been there. There's a difference between cockiness and confidence. Yep. You know, and at the end of the day, for them to you know brush it to the side, not really, you know, the announcers even not even mention it. You know, it, it was very disappointing. There well, is. and but, but the thing is, Ben McDonald, who was one of my favorite players growing up at LSU, I was in high school. I mean, he he was the commentator on that game when the right. kid kid flipped off the dugout, and you know what his comment was? Oh, I guess he's just letting them know who's number one. Right, so, exactly. Like they, they glorified the kid. Are you kidding sure. me? No. I mean, sure. shame, shame on ESPN. Shame on Ben McDonald. Shame on Tennessee. Shame on the athletic director. Shame on NC, NCAA. It's it's a joke. And, you know, we try to teach, you know, talk softly, carry big stick. Right. You know, you do your talking on the field. Now, competitive banter has been around for years. Like when we were playing ball, we there was always some chirping. Of course. But it was in competitive nature. There was no flipping people off. There were no F-bombs. 
um, unless you did it in your own glove when you were frustrated with your own self and it was no one could really hear it. Um, you know, you didn't talk about girlfriends and parents and stuff like that, but just the the overall body language and the actions and just I mean, you strike a guy out for the third out of the inning and you stare at the entire dugout. Well, you know what? I hope the next guy in the next inning, the first pitch leaves the yard. I don't know if you saw the guy, <clears throat> the Cubs pitcher that gave up six solo shots to the Yankees last week. Second pitcher in the history of Major League Baseball give up six home runs in a game. Mm. The night before the game, he tweeted, Yankee fans are awful. They think every fly ball is a home run. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. And it was next day. Yeah, he gave it six. So. Well, I, I think it's unfortunate that people are going to look at our our beards and say, "Oh, they're old. Get off my lawn," because yeah. I know there there's a whole let's let the kids have fun and stuff. But sure. trust me, we we all played <laughs> together. I think we all had fun. We expressed ourselves. But there's a way to do it and a way not to do it. So, well, and for me, you know, I I coach collegiate league and I coach. Um, Kids are going to be in be seniors in high school next year, and you're starting to see it trickle down. The mannerisms of you know talking smack, arguing with umpires. We uh, <clears throat> we start our collegiate league tomorrow. And we had a meeting, uh, team meeting uh, Sunday, and uh, no Saturday, and um, I basically sat all the kids down and said, "Look, your leash is like this." you're going to talk to the umpire let me talk to the umpire okay the umpiring th this is summer ball it's 110 degrees what kind of umpires do you think we're getting okay just play baseball keep your mouth shut if you're talking support your teammates back up your teammate it's okay for a little banter there's a lot of testosterone going on in college which i'm okay with it's friendly fire it's friendly competition but you know like like nick says act like you've been there before and then, you know what, the one, the kids that I have that are going D1, that are going NAIA, they're the ones that do it quietly. They show up, they got their routine, they're doing their bands, they're stretching, they're mentally visualizing how they're going to play that night. They don't chirp, you know, they back up their teammates. And we, we need to get back to that kind of environment for, for youth uh, and, and collegiate sports, for sure. <clears throat> Great. Great. Where are we at on social media, Nick? Uh, you can find us on Instagram at Bloodline Sports AZ, TikTok at Bloodline Sports, Twitter at Bloodline Sports, and on YouTube at BSN Bloodline Sports Network. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys. Also, check us out on BloodlineSports.co. We'll have this uh, video posted there along with some other great videos, some player spotlights, some interviews. Uh, so check it out. And thanks for joining us. All right, guys. Yeah, thank you. Go Irish.